The Americans lost two and a half thousand men killed. A thousand more were wounded. And yet, the Japanese force of 350 planes that inflicted these casualties on the men and ships at Pearl Harbor lost just 29 planes, less than a tenth. Such was the weakness of the American response. I arrived uh, just during the second attack of the Japanese bombers. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we didn't have a single cannon on board. And this was especially frustrating because during all our practice shooting, uh, we had won the first prize and were considered to be the best gunners in our class uh, in the fleet. In fact, uh, my chief gunner uh, was so frustrated he had nothing to shoot and he was crying with rage. Uh, all we could do was to help put out the fires and evacuate the wounded. All the battleships uh, were hit. Uh, And uh, there was, of course, a great confusion, smoke, a flame, uh, uh, sirens, uh, whistles. Uh, we were near the battleship Pennsylvania, and the Japanese bombs fell all around us. It was a devastating blow to the prestige of the United States. Four battleships lay on the bottom at Pearl Harbor, the rest severely damaged. But six and a half thousand miles away, Admiral Yamamoto heard no news of the two aircraft carriers he had thought were at Pearl. These, the Enterprise and the Lexington, were the real prize. They had left on routine missions before Nagumo's fleet had closed in. Yamamoto's victory was not complete, and these two carriers were to severely affect Japan's plans in the coming months. Nevertheless, as the reports flew round the world and the declarations of war were made, Pearl Harbor seemed to be an overwhelming victory for the people of Japan. But they had not only surprised the Americans, they had been successful elsewhere. But the attack on Pearl Harbor was only the most spectacular of many attacks which the Japanese launched almost simultaneously in several areas to the south and west of their country. Two of their main objectives were Singapore and Hong Kong, strategic centers of the British Empire. Hong Kong was attacked on December the 8th. It fell to the Japanese army on Christmas Day. Singapore, the richest city of the empire, was said to be invincible. Its defences were strengthened by the Royal Navy's two largest battleships, the Prince of Wales and the Repulse, who had come to these waters to deter the Japanese threat. But when the Japanese torpedo bombers opened the attack on Singapore, they sank both the Prince of Wales and the Repulse as the invasion began. now nothing to stop the troops of General Yamashita from landing on the shores of northern Malaya and moving south towards Singapore. Yamashita, the tiger of Malaya, the Japanese Rommel. Within two months he pushed his troops 300 miles through the jungles of Malaya and the British opposition until he stood along the shores of the narrow strait that separates Singapore Island from the mainland. This was the direction from which the British had thought an attack could never come. After a week of bombardment, Singapore fell. Louis Baum was there. He witnessed the last humiliating moments. The final days of the Battle of Singapore were drawing to a close, and the city was entirely encircled with the troops around the perimeter battling to keep the Japanese out. You can see over there on your right, on your left, 
rather, Fraser Hill, which was the west front uh, where the Japanese were, had a front line and from where they could overlook the city of Singapore. The conditions in the town at this time were, of course, appalling as one can expect. The, the whole sky was covered with a thick pall of black smoke coming from the, boy, from the burning oil reservoirs, the naval base. The sun couldn't pierce the thick clouds. The roads were cluttered with burnt out vehicles, with buses and trams which had been blown up in the heavy bombardments. The streets and the pavements littered with the dead of civilians. The services were breaking down. The water was broken down. The reservoirs were in the hands of Japanese. There's no more electricity, and the conditions reached the point where General Percival, the military commander, and the civil governor, Shenton Thomas, were forced to come to the decision that from the civil point of view, there was only one answer, and that was to surrender the city to the Japanese under the best terms possible. How serious was the loss of Singapore to the British? It was a dark period. Churchill was battling at the time uh, at the, one might say, the nadir of the war's history. Rommel was battling at the gates of Alexandria. The Nazis were hammering at the doors of the Kremlin. We in Britain were fighting the battle of the Atlantic. We were trying at the same time to rebuild our factories and industries, to recreate an army to invade Europe eventually. And there was very little to spare in the way of modern equipment or reinforcements of troops for a distant place like Singapore. It was and in a terrible uh, problem, I think, for the British government to decide whether they should send their few uh, equipment they could spare either to Suez or to Singapore. One had to be sacrificed, and it was decided that Suez was the more important, and the reinforcements could go there. We had to go without, and the inevitable end was the fall of Singapore. My last position was here in the gardens of four houses behind where you're standing. I had four guns, and I was there when Singapore fell. Um, I wasn't actually captured sort of physically by the Japanese. Um, we were, the whole city was, was, was uh, surrendered. But the first Japanese I saw was in the streets around here, because the next day the Japanese didn't occupy the city until Sunday morning. And the next day I took a stroll around, had nothing much else to do, having destroyed my equipment. And I, going, turning around the corner, I saw a Japanese soldier, and I thought I'd meet somebody, you know, fully armed with uh, submachine gun, tin hat, and everything else. And when I saw him, I immediately sort of hid my watch, because I knew that that was the person who disappear. And I saw a little Japanese soldier, he seemed to be no higher than that, um, dressed in sort of shabby-looking clothes to us. Mind you, we weren't all that smart. And I thought, my God, is that the Japanese army? But I didn't stay for long. I went back to my uh, gun position. I told the soldiers there, well, the Japanese are in the vicinity. Be careful, uh, you know, they'll be with us before long. Were you badly treated? Uh, personally, not to start with, no. The takeover of the city... The takeover of the city itself was well-disciplined. Uh, it was what the one sole concession that the Japanese, Yamashita, uh, would agree to with General Percival was that uh, the only certain Japanese, uh, the disciplined Japanese troops would occupy the city, and we insisted on that to avoid a general massacre of the civilian population. They occupied it the following day on the Sunday, and personally, um, I can't complain. I, had, I, I, I didn't see any more of the Japanese soldiers after that. The tough times were yet to come. They were to follow, yes. General Percival signed the Articles of Surrender. 130,000 men were put into captivity. Another Western outpost had also been dragged into the Japanese embrace, the Philippines. Here, on the 8th of December, the day after Pearl Harbor, the American Air Force was taken by surprise and half destroyed within an hour. <laughs> 
A week later, little remained of American air power in the Philippines. The Japanese planes ruled the skies over Manila. Its extensive shipyards were now untenable as a base for the U.S. fleet, and Manila was declared an open city by General MacArthur on the day after Christmas, 1941. Japanese civilians came out of their cellars to cheer the victorious General Homa. As Singapore fell to the Japanese armies, General MacArthur's troops were being cut off in the Bataan Peninsula. For three months they held out without food, with no hope of reinforcements. By March, the Americans knew the situation was hopeless. President Roosevelt ordered MacArthur to leave for Australia. A fortnight later, the men left in Bataan were forced to surrender. 70,000 of them now began the famous Death March, 55 miles from Marivelle to San Fernando. Between 7 and 10,000 of these men died on the way. But it was not over yet. The Americans still had a toehold in the Philippines, the four forts in the Bay of Manila. Of these, Fort Mills on Corregidor, MacArthur's former headquarters, held out for another.